Okay, we are here with uh, Jose Paul Feliciano. Joao, excuse me. Joao Paul Feliciano da, uh, of the Pataca Discus, uh, and also uh, leader and uh, member of the Real Combo Lisbonense, mm -hmm. and also art artist. Mm -hmm. So you have three <laughs> roles. We, we, let's start with the uh, Pataca Discus. Can you, can you tell us uh, about this label? Uh, Yes, um, but, uh, in fact, um, to start talking with Pataka Disco, we should, uh, I should talk a, a bit of how I see myself as an artist, yes. because Pataka Disco um, was, was born out of that, um, out of my artistic activity, which I always uh, understood as a very broad territory. Uh, so uh, maybe we can start with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we come to Patagonia. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm a uh, contemporary artist. I was going to say visual artist, but I guess visual is not enough. <laughs> um, and so I'm a contemporary artist and musician. I've always, since my teenage years, been interested in the visuals and, and music and I very, on, uh, very early on started on both uh, activities and, and always very naturally they mixed so in my work as an artist doing uh, exhibitions in museums and galleries I've often worked with sound and music and even the performative side of it, like playing. And in music, I always work with this, uh, uh, with the visual side of it and also the conceptual side of it, which I take from the contemporary art scene. Um, so this has always been for me like very familiar, these two territories. Um, so I, I'm not going to like <laughs> do uh, a, a live resume of all the things that I've done, huh? but um, because they, they include many uh, collaborations and experiments and, and project, very different projects that I got involved into from designing big multimedia events to being involved in architecture or design or even um, in the early 90s in the first half of the, the 90s uh, I had a rock band that was sort of very significant in the Portuguese uh, rock scene called Tina and the Top Ten and, and I had a, a record label as well that was the time of the seven inch singles and the mail order and communication by fax and letters, pre email, pre internet kind of stuff. And it was very hard to, of, to go over the distribution uh, networks because it was all physical. And so it didn't last too long. And in the recent years, like, um, this last five or so years, um, I, while I was working here in this studio, you know, which I have since ten years, as my artist studio, I, when I came here I was not really doing uh, music as a musician. I, I was using music in my artwork. You know, um, but not I, I, I had not a band at that time, or uh, and so Real Combo Lisbonense, my band right now, and Pataka Discos came after, and it came because of having this space. So this yeah. space, which is a really nice space, big, allowed me to uh, was not like something very well planned and. Let's do this. It was very naturally, the instruments started to be around, 
then my brother, which is also involved in music and very interested in the recording and, and in the technology, and he started to invest in some recording equipment and instruments, and because we had lots of space, the instruments and the equipment started to be run, and suddenly this was a rehearsal room, and then it became a record studio. And during this process, I I decided to to create a, a company for me to do all the things that I wanted to do besides being a, an artist and selling, eventually selling artworks. It's very bad for now, right now. Um, so I, I, I started Pataka Discos, both as a label uh, and as a, a production company. So if I want to, 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 do, to organize a concert, I, I can do it mm -hmm. as, as a promoter. Mm -hmm. and, and I do the management and the booking for Real Combo Lisbonians. I do it through Pataka Discos. And any other project that uh, I have that I might have, I can use Pataka Discus as my company to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the background uh, that uh, led to the appearance of Pataka mm -hmm. Discus. And Pataka, the, the story of Pataka Discus is also very kind of a an organic development, natural development, very much based on my sensibility as a musician and artist, and the people or the music that I came across with. Um, it's um, I started Pataka around 2009, um, but I only at my first uh, real release on late 2010. So the first year and a half, um, I was kind of organizing. Mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, Real Combo Lisbonians and Marcia, a singer and songwriter. Uh, she was also the, one of the singers in Real Combo Lisbonians. So it was very familiar, huh? but I, I started with these two artists, okay. Real Combo Lisbonians, this sort of vintage orchestra that plays um, old Portuguese dance music, mm -hmm. like uh, it's dedicated to, to research and recover and update the, the patrimonial of like the, the the beginning of Portuguese dance music. Uh, it means late 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. 60s, mm -hmm. mostly around that. Um, so that was Real Combo Lisbonians and Marcia. And actually the first recordings that we did here, uh, I didn't release myself those recordings, I licensed them to uh, Optimus Discus. Mm -hmm. sort of, it's not really a label, it's like a platform for mm -hmm. releasing music that is it's owned by this telecommunications company. But it's, it's, it's a nice uh, project that they have. So actually, our, my first releases were not real, releases were licenses. Um, licensements. And, and then on on the uh, by the end of 2009, I I did my first actual release with the first album by Marcia, um, and it it was very well received. That was well, it was actually a very nice job. Uh, the record came came out really really nice. And Marcia, thinking about da? Mm -hmm. da, yeah, yeah, da. And Marcia, is, she's a really outstanding singer and songwriter mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when when the record came out it was really like a, a surprise for a lot of people wow who's that girl who's that label <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Mars is not anymore on Pataka Disco, she moved to EMI Records, <laughs> <laughs> which is, it, it's nice, I mean, it's very, it's nice for her, of course, and it's nice for Pataka, uh, for, for my level, I mean, that proves that uh, my intuitions were right. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Um, and then the, 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 the other artists came in very naturally. I mean, you can find Charlie Brown came in because my brother just met them and he, he, he liked their music very much and proposed them to, to do the record here mm -hmm. in the studio um, to produce the, the record. Even before we we talked about releasing it on Pataka Dishkush, but then it came naturally mm -hmm. because they were doing their their record here. I mean, mm -hmm. so very naturally okay. the, the conversation about releasing you can finish Charlie Brown on Pataka Dishkush came about. Um, then Julie and the Cardjackers, um, which is like my third release, uh, the two guys that uh, are front man of Julian the card checkers. They were playing in Marcia's band while I was also playing, so we <laughs> met there and it was very naturally then <laughs> to release their uh, to record and release their their album. And Walter Benjamin he I met Walter through Marcia. Uh, she invited him to co-produce the the album with me, so uh, and we we did it along very very well. I mean, we we really loved each other, and it was a very nice um, chemistry between yeah. us. He's much much younger than me, but uh, it was also very nice. And so, of course, when Walter wanted to uh, talk about releasing an album, we. It was very obvious to releasing it on Pataka Dishkush. Um, and now uh, we're working on a new album by Real Combo mm -hmm. And we have a, a couple of other projects that are like, getting in place to be okay. worked on. Always from uh, Portuguese artists? So far, but I have a project now for uh, next year. We're discussing it involving um, a, a Brazilian guy and two Americans. Mm -hmm. I, I won't mention them, <laughs> although uh, they're very significant. <laughs> and, and if we, if we do that, that, that would be, be a, a major breakthrough for Pataka mm -hmm. Discus uh, to start release material by like international yeah, artists, yeah. not mm -hmm. just Portuguese. And are those records distributed also abroad? Because I was uh, looking for them in Italy, actually, yeah. but um, no. they, uh, nobody could no. help me. I <laughs> said, okay, I must no, go to listen. <laughs> that is my first, uh, my next um, goal. I mean, I, in one year and a half, two years or so, so I, I could establish Pataka Discus in Portugal as a, a label that. Mm -hmm most of the people involved in music know about the label or the artist. Um, now I really have to to get into uh, inter uh, an international level, so I'm, I've been working on uh, this uh, connections to get to the point where I can have uh, some inst uh, international distribution at least. Of course I have everything on iTunes and people can access to it on digitally. Mm -hmm. right? And I have a very basic uh, mail order system to a, a, a website. It really needs to, to get to another level. It's very basic, but it, well, it, it's at least enough to be, we exist, the artists are this, and, and you can order. Mm -hmm. The CDs, if you want, but um, that's that's our first, uh, our next goal is to get some international distribution, um, because the Portuguese market is really small. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're a tiny country, and so you you, you can uh, with the 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 
sales figures right now they have been dropping I mean, you really have to to get to a broader market because um, you there's no way you can tell a lot of CDs. Yeah. Which market are you targeting? Uh, for obvious reasons, there are two. Um, first of all, it's Spain and Brazil mm -hmm. because of affinity and proximity, of course. Um, then, obviously, the United, the U.S. would be right or Germany or. But I mean, th these two for me are obvious and. That's the ones I've been exploring in terms of potential, potentializing the previous relationships that I have already. Um, like I'm, I, I'm working with a, a new distributor now in Portugal, but it's a Spanish, Iberian uh, distributor. So the, the, the company is Spanish and they have the branch in Portugal. For now, we're just working in Portugal, uh, but um, when the time comes, I know they they'll be keen to to distribute uh, in Spain as well. Um, but we have to to have a strategy. It's not worth just uh, to put Pataka Disc Records on their catalog just like that. I mean, you have to work with yeah, the bands going to to do some gigs there mm -hmm. and have like a. a on the radio? Yeah, some radio and, and some reviews and mm -hmm. some more interviews in magazines. So that's what I'm working on right now. It's like preparing mm, a campaign, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, for the moment when it, it, it would make sense to have actually the, the, the CDs to be, on, to be distributed in Spain. More or less the same thing with Brazil. Um, and uh, of course it's exploring, as I was saying, existing connections uh, um, like with Spain uh, right now I'm sorry um, I have a very um, very interesting uh, connection with the, the Spain, uh, Spanish music scene right now because of something else that I'm some, a project that I've been working on I will tell you right away that is act actually on the on the over uh, overlapping of music and visuals visual art I mean my activity as a visual artist uh, which is it, uh, um, do you know about the festival uh, Primavera uh, sound festival Mm, Primavera yes, sound yeah. in, yeah. Bar in Barcelona, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the Primavera guys, they um, decided to, to have a, a Portuguese leg for the mm -hmm. festival. Yeah. And they're starting this year um, in Oporto. So it's uh, it will be called Optimus Primavera sound in Oporto. And I got the chance to be invited. I, I'm, tell like the details how I got there, it's not that interesting. But I, I got the chance to be invited to be the art director for the festival site. So to think of all like the visuals, all the... It, it's even a bit more, it, it's even deeper than that, because um, I was, um, when we talked about how I could be involved in the festival, uh, I, I made it clear that I, of course, it would result in visual things that I would design. But I, uh, the interesting thing was to have in, to have me, like in the team, thinking about the festival. What kind of experience do we do we want to build for audience and music right? in a fantastic scenario? Uh, and the, the the festival will be like in a beautiful park in the center of. Well, it's not really Porto downtown, but it's like in the city of mm -hmm. Porto, just by the sea. Mm -hmm. So it's like amazing. Um, yeah, so I've been uh, involved in in this project. Uh, the festival is like in three weeks now. 
and and of course because this is a, although the the, the Portuguese uh, leg of Primavera is being uh, uh, organized by a, a joint venture between the Portuguese promoter and the the guys from Barcelona, and so obviously I, I met the Barcelona guys and they were really like excited with the the, the things that were that I was designing for the festival in Oporto, and and finally it, it, it's like a, a funny episode and coincidence when I met the guy that is like the director of the festival in Barcelona and and suddenly he, we re, he realized that I had this band in the 90s, Teen in the Top Ten, mm -hmm. and he was a guy that organized a concert for us in Barcelona <laughs> in 94. <laughs> so there was like, wow, it's not possible, it's you, wow, fantastic, great. So of, that was a funny coincidence, but of course... I probably yeah. it was not a coincidence. No, <laughs> of course it was not just a coincidence, it was like a, a continuity. It, it was even, <laughs> there was this continuity. Um, but um, so he, he well, he, they invited me to go this year to Barcelona, and of course they want to discuss how to take this collaboration further. And so that means I, I will be involved in the pro, in the Spanish music scene somehow very nearly uh, in the next times. And of course, I, I I plan to explore that as a way to have Pataka Discus getting into mm -hmm. Spain, uh, at least. Um. Okay, so uh, things are... Uh, the, uh, Pataka is... It's oh, moving. Is, yeah, it's moving, <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's okay. a reality that is uh, growing uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, yes, with many perspectives. That's very, very good. Yeah. Uh, but, um, 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 how do you, what do you think about the, the, the musical scene in Lisbon? I, I had the impression that in the last years, last ten years, uh, there's been a great uh, improvement. Of course, yeah, a huge improvement. I, I, I think we, we can't speak about the, uh, the Lisbon scene. We should speak about the Portuguese scene. Because uh, another, um, Something else that has also changed is that the, the, the amount of people doing great music outside of the capital has also expanded a lot. So you have lots of like, you have bands from everywhere in the country doing... So, uh, <laughs> I'm impressed, I must yeah, say. Yeah, th that was much more difficult. Of course, there are many more musicians in Lisbon than out there in the north of the country, of course. But um, but there are bands everywhere in the in, in musicians and music events pretty much spread it around the country. Of course, in Oporto there's also a, a, an interesting scene. Um, but more and more you have musicians or bands, people that are doing great stuff, and they they're not from Lisbon. They live like a uh, hundred kilometers away because they're one hour from Lisbon yeah. on the highway. So um, it's. It's a small country, so <laughs> in that sense it's sort of an advantage. But um, the Portuguese music scene has, has grown in, in every direction, like in quantity and in quality and in diversity, uh, has grown a lot in, in the last like 10 years, I would, I would say, mm -hmm. more significantly. So, um, and also on the ability of people to to overcome like the the physical borders of the country. So there's more people like playing outside now, from like Marisa selling out the Carnegie Hall in New York, to the legendary Tiger Man playing like France a lot, to experimental musician Rafael Toral uh, playing all over Europe, US, Japan, Korea, etc. To many other artists, Portuguese artists that are playing like Brazil often, um, Spain. So there's a lot of m much more uh, 
Portuguese music being able to get outside, um, which is also a sign of uh, <coughs> capacity and quality. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, uh, of course. I mean, then the reality, <laughs> the day by day reality of daily living. It's not easy. I mean, yeah, but uh, it, it's sort of tough. But that, that's not. We have our own specificities in Portugal, but this is not a, port, a specific Portuguese situation. Of no. course, in Greece it's it's much worse. It's worse. Maybe in Italy it's not. It, it's, it's different. It's, it's different. Uh, it's different. it's yeah. uh, also in very the, difficult, uh, but uh, for other yeah. reasons. Uh, yeah. In Spain, Spain maybe um, it's not as difficult as in Portugal, but it's also very difficult. It's also very tough. So, but it's not specific. Um, that ref obviously that reflects on that kind of slows down a bit the the ability to like do stuff. And, and get out of this stuff because I mean <laughs> you simply have no resources to do it yeah. like in, um, but at the same time it has been like pushing people to I mean yeah. because what do you do I mean <laughs> are you going to kill yourself <laughs> no, you're not. so you're going to stay alive what you do you do staying alive <laughs> Are you going to like uh, scrap cardboards in the street for a living? No, <laughs> you're going to pick up a guitar and you do your own stuff and you, you, you record like your songs on your yeah. cell phone and if they're good. I mean, so yeah, that, that also that kind of reaction. Reaction, obviously. Positive is, reaction. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, I mean, on my own um, level. Uh, Pataka Disco was also, was also moved by that. I mean, I, I, I'm the art, the, my sales on the artworks were already dropping. I could notice, like around 2008, that mm, this is going to be tough on the art market for the years to come. So I have to be prepared to do other stuff, and that's the time now to to put out the record label. So it also mm -hmm. came out of like a a way to overcome difficulties. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, thank you very much. For You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> mm.